Thanks, Mr. Costa. I was just uh, conversing with my colleague, Senator Graham, about our experience on the Gang of Eight. Was that about 10 years ago? Uh, yeah. We had four Democrats and four Republicans, and we spent months putting together a comprehensive immigration reform bill, which passed in the floor of the Senate. Included in that farm bill was a section on farm workers agreed to by both growers and farm workers, and it involved a path to citizenship. It was, uh, I, th I think, a thoughtful and serious attempt to address this problem. It passed in the Senate, was never called for consideration in the House of Representatives. Senator Bennett has been one of the leaders on this issue from Colorado, Senator Feinstein, Senator Rubio, and a few others. Uh, I do believe there is a will to solve this problem. And the fact that it is part of comprehensive immigration reform is the fact that we have, we think, valid arguments in many aspects of immigration to consider it. And I hope we do. I ultimately hope we do. Uh, I want to say that I have no prejudice against growers and farmers at all. Uh, I've had a valued member of my staff for many years who was one of the, whose family was one of the largest employers of uh, migrant farm workers in Illinois, in southern Illinois, good people, really thoughtful people who cared a lot for their workers, and they showed it. Uh, I also want to say that we're living in a world that is hard to understand. I pass by these fast food restaurants, and I see what's written on the signs outside. Burger King, $15.70 an hour to start at your Burger King. You go by on I-55 driving from Chicago to Springfield, you pass an Aldi warehouse. Aldi, of course, being a major grocery company. They're offering nearly $20 an hour for starting salaries. For people who come to work for Aldi, I don't know what they'd be doing, but it certainly would not start off as being too technical. And they're being offered 20 bucks an hour to sign up. So when we talk about the current wage rate in this country, I think we have to be honest and realistic about it. There's a competition going on and a bidding war for our limited number of workers. Having said that, Ms. Torres, I read your entire statement. You didn't have a chance in five minutes to present it. And there are many parts of it that are just heartbreaking to think in America that this is taking place. Would you address the issue of wage theft? That is in your statement there. And it appears that many workers who are nominally being paid so much per hour are actually being paid less because there's a middleman. What's that all about? Well, thank you for your question, Senator. Um, you know, I'll begin this with a story from Georgia because I was just there uh, last summer and I was speaking with some um, farm worker women uh, who were indigenous um, workers, spoke an indigenous language from Mexico. Um, their first language was not Spanish or English. Um, and we were, you know, they were walking through some of the issues that they're seeing um, and started to tell me that when they get paid, they're getting paid by the person who actually gives them a ride to work. So it's not the foreman, it's not the actual owner of the farm, and they're getting paid in cash. And they're very aware that often the wages that they're being paid in cash don't include the amount that they should be paid for the work that they did that week. And so we're looking at not just a foreman as an intermediary. Now we're seeing this per random person who's giving them a job, keeping some of the money. And so these workers um, were letting me know that, well, we can't say anything. We don't have papers. And I need a ride to work because I don't own a car. I can't afford a car. And so we're talking about the most vulnerable of workers. When we're talking about individuals who are keeping our food secure, we're talking about individuals who often don't feel like they have a voice. They don't have legal status. They feel that if they say anything, they may get deported. And, and so- Let me add if I can. Of course. Just a few weeks ago, it was disclosed of, about the exploitation of child labor, immigrant child labor. And that, some of that's happening in the heart of the Midwest. You know, I, I'm not going to name names for the states that are involved, but we think that we're above that sort of thing, and it's not true. In food processing and slaughterhouses, children are being employed. Uh, I don't know if it's intentionally but, or negligently, 
but it, it doesn't speak well for our country that that would be happening. You mentioned one of the young people with you today who started picking fruit at age 14, did 14, you say? 14, correct. Is that common? That is common. Uh, unfortunately, in agriculture, um, children can work in ag at a very young age. And so, you know, oftentimes you have parents, we're talking about poverty wages here, where farm workers are making between like median and mean somewhere between $17,500 a year to a little less than $20,000 a year. I'm Those sorry. are poverty wages and so, yes, sir. Sorry to interrupt you, but I wanna ask one other question. Mr. Litch, of one of the proposals in the House of Representatives that passed on a partisan basis was to impose E-Verify on agriculture workers. That, of course, would check whether they're documented or undocumented. That legislation also included changes to the H-2A program, reversing recent Department of Labor regulations setting wages. The bill did not include a path to legal status for undocumented workers, even though we know they make up at least 40% of the agriculture workforce. What would a mandatory E-Verify provision for agriculture workers do to the agriculture industry? E-Verify alone without some reforms to the H-2A program or a visa program would certainly be devastating. Um, I think both have to happen together. We live in uh, and operate in states that currently do have E-Verify and we comply with those laws. But I think for the ag sector overall, which is I think what you're asking, uh, it would be pretty devastating to have that uh, based on the percentage that you mentioned of workers that are undocumented. So uh, both have to happen together. There has to be some type of H-2A re reform, greater access to the program, um, before mandatory you verify. Mr. Carr, I want to, I'm going over a minute here, but I want to give you a chance to respond to Ms. Torres about practices at your farm. I, 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 I want you to have a chance to say a word about it. I'd be glad to. Well, first of all, Ms. Torres was referring to non-H2A workers, and unfortunately she was also referring to undocumented workers. This is one of the reasons why I joined the H2A program 25 years ago. I have the oversight of the Department of Labor investigating or coming and looking at me every time. My payroll and my payroll records are published. They come in and look at those. Every employee on my farm gets a separate paycheck with their wage statement. So participating in the H-2A program is one way we can make sure that there are, isn't farm labor abuse. Thank you. Senator Grant.